Well, last year, the Charlton Athletic Hall of Fame Award went to a Charlton legend, to Derek Hales. Derek's best years were spent at the Valley during the 70s and early 80s. Well, it's no exaggeration to say, without the man who's honoured for 1995, you may well not have been at tonight's dinner, celebrating the third anniversary of that emotional return to Charlton's home, to the Valley. Lenny Lawrence is honoured tonight, the Houdini man who kept his cool during Charlton's most troubled times. Lenny took over the managerial reins in November 1982 from Ken Craggs. He inherited a team that boasted a European superstar in its ranks and a club who were not financially equipped for such extravagance. Mark Hollier soon departed as Charlton were wound up by the Inland Revenue. John Fryer entered the stage as a hero. His image, though, was shattered when he decided to move the club from the Valley to Selhurst Park. Effectively, for Lenny Lawrence now, every game would be an away match. Amazingly, Lenny Lawrence kept the team going. Somehow, he achieved promotion to Division One and a trip to Wembley for the Members' Cup final. In addition to all that, Lenny's team managed to survive in the top flight. You can see why they call him the Houdini Man. Do you remember that night at St Andrews? Walsh runs over it. It's now left for Peak. Oh, it's a good one! Oh, it's the goal! Which might well have preserved First Division football for Charlton Athletic. And it's Peter Shirtliff again. The reaction to that fantastic victory showed once again the special spirit of Charlton Football Club and the deep relationship with Lenny Lawrence and his players. The team benefited from that support. They had total belief in the rallying cry from their manager. Players believe they can get out of it. I believe they can get out of it. Hopefully the supporters believe we can get out of it. We're only, you know, it's still going to take a lot of hard work and a lot of effort. But if we do, it will be the greatest escape of all time. And of course they did escape, time and time again. Lenny moved on to Middlesbrough in 1991. The borough were promoted to the newly formed Premiership at the very first attempt. And all this without the millions now available to Brian Robson. From Borough to Bradford, Lenny's just left the Yorkshire club. They're in mid-table and in the hat for tomorrow's FA Cup third round draw. A cruel game when you remember Bradford's Coca-Cola Cup win over Forest. And they're still pouring men forward, even defenders like Jacobs here. And Ormond Roy, yes! Ian Ormond Roy, with two minutes to go, has scored what could well be the winning goal for Bradford City. Although he's moved on, Lenny will always be identified as a Charlton man. He knew how important it was to clear away the weeds and the ruins and return to the valley. Certainly, for those people involved in the return, the day we play the first game there will be a, an emotional um, time, if you like, the like of which will never be repeated if you stay in football for a hundred years, because I can't see it recurring too often in this day and age. When the builders departed and Charlton finally came home three years ago, Lenny couldn't be part of that wonderful day. But he was the man who sowed the seeds of survival. Now there's genuine hope the club can get back to the highest level, but this time with a real home and a real future. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome Lenny Lawrence to the Charlton Athletic Hall of Fame.